Blue Sniffers and Spruce Snippers. Welcome back to Blitzkrieg Motorworks. I'm Bob, and this is my next out-of-the-box build. I generally try to do an out-of-the-box build, and then I'll follow it up with a really intense, deep, um, I'll throw a ton of aftermarket on a kit. I'll be using resin, um, photo etch, track links, le uh, lights and lenses if I can get them, barrels, all of that kind of stuff. This is just a straight out-of-the-box build, but it's there's a lot to this kit. So sit back and enjoy part one. So I've had a bit of a problem with my last project. I was working on an amusing hobby Panther 2 with a cast turret that I found on uh, the website from Shapeway. So it's a 3D printed domed turret for a Panther 2. And I got about halfway through the build process and I just hit a wall. All of a sudden I had no desire whatsoever to progress on that build at all. So after stewing over it for a few weeks and trying to figure something out, uh, I decided to box it up and try something very different for me. Um, this is a mini art. T54-1 like the very first of the modern T54, T55 series, I guess. Uh, this is the second incarnation of this kit. This kit came out in 2017. Uh, I bought it in about 2018. Uh, the first kit came out in 2016, and the big difference is the original kit had a complete interior. Uh, this kit does not have a complete interior. It has a rudimentary interior in the hull and a bit of turret, uh, a bit of it detail in the turret. Uh, but it's a much simpler kit because of that. But otherwise, it's the same kit. Uh, I picked this up uh, from a modeling buddy of mine. He runs a company, uh, Kit Bunker. Uh, I'll put a link in the description down below. Um, Rod's a great guy. He normally carries um, pre-owned kits. It's like you, Not necessarily started kits, but kits people have purchased and then sold off for estate sales or whatever. So uh, his inventory changes all the time great guy and he's a mini art dealer so he can get all the mini art stuff so pick this up from him and we're going to try and get started now i have built one mini art kit earlier uh it was a t70 scout tank uh world war ii uh it was an old kit i think it had been sitting on the dealer shelf for a long time not in the sunlight uh but I, apparently old mini art kits they seem to have a problem uh, with brittle plastic. And uh, I didn't have too many problems with the hull and turret assemblies. They went together fairly well on the T70. But the, uh, the tracks were another story. The tracks were just absolutely gorgeous. Um, but trying to get them off the sprue was an absolute nightmare. Um, they were not just uh, brittle and fragile. They didn't just break, they grenaded. Um, so it was a nightmare trying to get that kit together. So this one, hopefully, because it's a newer kit, better plastic, it looks much better designed, much easier to uh, get apart and get things done. So this will be kind of my palette cleanser. I'm not going to do anything to this. Uh, there is some aftermarket stuff, but I don't think I'm going to do anything but build it out of the box. And I'm actually going to build this version. And I'm going to get all the Vallejo paint for this. I probably got a decent chunk of it, but it looks like I'm going to need to get some more of this. Um, they don't have anything for Tammy. I know I could probably mix some stuff up that'll make it work. But uh, I've done some painting with Vallejo stuff already, and it looks really promising. It looks uh, every bit as good as Tammy to me without... Uh, and I can just use water, so this is great. That hurt. Voila. Um, that's a lot of sprues. I've never seen the road wheels come on their own separate sprues. Usually they're on like a fairly big sprue if you have that many. This is a really unusual way to do it. Um, I suppose if it's cheaper, it gives you better results. Great. And this is everything. That, that This and this came in the same bag. And in the box, there's still three more sprues, full-size sprues plus the tracks. Oh boy. Well, here we go. 
since there's so many sprues, I'm using Tamiya Black Panel Line Accent Color to make them a little easier to identify through the pile in the box. Step five, actually steps one through five. Um, step one through four is assembling the front and rear two torsion bar assemblies. And then step five, oddly, is assembling the other six torsion bar assemblies and installing all of them, which is kind of weird, with a few other parts. Um, there's a door in the floor, escape hatch, I guess, and a few side components. Um, when you build these, do not cut any parts off the sprue unless you are building each particular one because other than these two and all the torsion bars are all the same part but other than this these two upper and lower parts because this is a two three piece assembly with the torsion bar um, but other than these two stations the rest are all different all of them um, so do not cut parts off the sprue until you're ready to glue them and install them. How I set this up is I um, put them on either side so I know which which station they were supposed to go into and then I just slide them in and they actually go in. If you see there's a hole in there and hopefully I can do this the first time kind of sort of. There we go. That's how your torsion bars get done and just so I can exaggerate this is where the swing arms connect. So you have functional torsion bars as long as you don't get any glue into these holes um, when you install them. So be very careful when you put in your glue, you just glue around the sides and that's it. Now make sure that you get the parts lined up and only put the glue on the part and where it attaches to the lower hull. Keep your glue away from the torsion bars, otherwise you will now have a fixed suspension and all this work will have been done for nothing. If you leave them loose, they will still function. I'm halfway through step 20. Um, and so far the parts count is about five bazillion. It's actually not that bad. Uh, the fidelity is pretty good. If you can use as little glue as possible, you can still have the suspension components working. How much spring they'll have in the end is another story. And I did muck up and there's a couple more on the other side than this side that are mucked up, but most of them are still movable. I'm really liking the build so far. Um, the plastic's really nice to work with. It's not nearly as brittle as their old stuff. It's actually a bit on the soft side. I, I kind of like it, uh, but still easily sandable and uh, and machinable, uh, and not having a problem cutting it with the knife. If anything, I have to uh, hold back a bit and be a little more careful. But so far, so good. I'm liking the build. Um, that was my mistake. Pay attention in the instructions, I glued this plate, this is two pieces, I glued this plate in upside down, realized it just before the glue was dry, managed to peel it off, breaking a chunk in the process, and thought I'd glued it back in on the pegs, but I guess I missed it by about a couple of millimeters. Uh, looking at the instructions, that shouldn't matter. Um, this is just a brace for the side panels uh, and the rest of the, the upper hull builds over top. I'm going to take a break right now because I am going to paint all of this black. I know it says in the instructions to paint it white, but there's really no point. I don't really want anyone to see the interior, especially my wonky wall. Uh, the turret I will do because you should be able to see some of that through the turret hatch. I'll kind of see what there's going to be total. Um, but yeah, uh, the parts count. Actually, when you look at the detail on some of these, and you, f you realize how many part individual parts there are. I kind of look through this and, uh, oh, one of the things I do is when there's movable parts, I like to highlight it. Um, I went through and I counted on the sprue map because I know they say there's, 
970 parts. Yes, there's a total of 57. This is one of the completed wheels. Haven't done the seams yet. The back hub is installed. Um, they are keyed to align them, but the keying is a bit on the sloppy side, so line them up by eye to make sure that they, uh, all the holes line up on the outside, because uh, you can clock it pretty easily. This is the front side, and you can see some of this flash. This is on almost every wheel, front and back, so i got to cut all that off very carefully with the exacto. The, uh, the spray template that I used, I just got off eBay. It's just one of these cheap uh, spray templates. I actually needed a tw uh, 19 millimeter, and it's only 18 and 20. <laughs> so I had a little bit of overspray, not a big deal. The weathering will take care of that. Um, so how I take care of the seams, I use a Flexifile Black, which is their coarse. I wet sand with it, and this is ends up what it looks like when it's dry. And then I wet sand again while it's still wet with their medium grit. And this is what it looks like cleaned up, ready for paint. And yes, I painted the insides uh, the 4BO color, the Vallejo. Russian green for BO. Straight, I uh, painted it straight out of the container. It was a bit on the thick side, but it went on, went on pretty good. There's a little bit of slurry still left. I got to clean off, and then when they're fully painted, some of the overspray was a little worse in some places, so I had to paint it up. And for that, I used Tamiya. Rubber and black. I'll make everything blend in when it's done. Oh, that's you can really see it. they're all pretty bad for the uh, the flash, and you need that because uh, where did I put the spray? There it is. There's a cap. This is what attaches the wheel to here. So this goes through the wheel and attaches to there, and then you put this cap over top so it needs to be smooth for it to sit down. So I gotta clean all of those up next. Okay, a couple of words of warning about the idler wheel. When you assemble the mounts, um, the pins are quite a bit smaller than the holes. So make sure you line up the, uh, the hub location, line that up. There's plenty of slop. Come on, focus. There we go. And then just shave off the excess on the sides. The idler itself actually does work. The pin and idler assembly, those are the two parts. So that little stubby part of the pin fits into this hole. And your idler wheel goes around it. So this is functional. I'm not going to install this. Uh, until I get all the tracks and everything on because you can adjust your track tension that way. Now uh, the instructions tell you to have it straight down so that's probably where I'll start and then I'll see how well everything fits and I'll get the tracks tensioned right and then you have a little cap. The other thing is there's a little bit of slop in the drive sprocket when you assemble it so just line up the teeth and uh, there is a part, actually I think it's right there, that was damaged a little bit it looks like when it came out of the mold uh, Part of the ejector assembly damaged it, but uh, it doesn't really show up too too badly. Just thought I'd record a little bit of my painting process in the spray booth. Nothing much to look at. I painted the tires first, and then I do the uh, the overspray with the stencil. It's all done. I put some tape on. These didn't muck up the paint too much. Wheels all look fine. Dry sprocket 
that's our fine. I mixed the Vallejo with about 10% with uh, Vallejo's airbrush thinner. And those. And now there's only one more part that we're waiting for. Yes, tracks. Lovely tracks. 90 per side. That all have to be individually cut off. And trimmed. I'm almost halfway through cleaning up the first half of the tracks. I still got these left to do. These are all done. I'm checking for some fit. Everything looks good. Everything's nice and flat. I don't see any really big gaps, so I am cleaning up everything fine. Just wanted to let everybody know, um, when you clean these up, one of the reasons I hate doing individual tracks from the kit is all the cleanup. So, for the tracks with the teeth, one third of them have five attachment points. One, two, three, four, five. Which means you have to clean up one, two, three, four, five. Focus this. There's a tab six, seven, eight, nine, and sometimes ten bits, even if you cut flush. I timed a few of these and calculated out, and it should only take me four and a half hours continuously to complete this. So I'm going to cut the video off here and I'll pick it up again putting on the lower suspension and doing the upper hole and turret. Thanks a lot. Talk to you next time guys. Bye bye.